Hi Year 6, welcome to today's maths lesson. The feedback I got from yesterday was that you preferred having me and the PowerPoint, so that's something I'm going to try and do going forwards. So, today we're going to be carrying on looking at fractions and decimals and how they relate to each other. We're going to start, as we always do, by looking at the four different fractions and decimals and seeing which one you feel is the odd one out. So, pause the video now, have a go. OK, so to be able to compare these, we need to try and make them all similar. So we're going to use the skill we used yesterday by turning these fractions so they have a denominator of either 10 or 100. Now I'm going to make them into 100 because I'm looking further down the line and seeing that those, particularly this one, will be easier to turn into 100. So the first one I'm going to start with is 4 fifths. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to try and make it so that it has a denominator of 100, like so. Now to go from 5 to 100, I'm going to multiply, and I'm going to multiply by 20. What I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. So again, times, oh, that's very dodgy, 20, times by 20, 4 times by 20 is 80. And now I'm going to turn that into a decimal. I know from yesterday that it would be zero point and then we take the numerator so it's 0 0.80 but we don't need to put the zero at the end so it's just going to be 0 0.8 so I can tell straight away that this is the same as this so let's move on to the next one I'm going to be looking at 20 over 25 and again, I'm going to look to times that to turn it into 100 as the denominator. So I take my 25. I'm going to multiply it by something to get 100. I multiply it by 4. 25 times 4 is 100. What I do to the bottom, I need to do to the top. Times by 4. 20 times by 4 is 80. So once again I've got 80 over 100 which must mean it's 0 0.8. So this is the same, this is the same and this is the same which must mean this is the odd one out but let's just double check to make sure. So I've got 80 over 200 and again I'm going to turn that into a fraction with a denominator of 100. Now to go from 200 to 100, I'm not going to multiply because that will make it bigger. I'm going to divide. I divide by 2. 200 divided by 2 is 100. What I do to the bottom, I need to do to the top. Divided by 2. 80 divided by 2 is going to be 40. Now 40 over 100 is not 0 0.8 because that would be 80 over 100. So 40 over 100 must be 0 0.4. Therefore, this one is the odd one out. OK, let's move on. So, in previous lessons, we were looking at turning a fraction into a decimal by making the denominator either 10 or 100. But with some fractions, that's just not possible. Some fractions, we can't have a denominator of 10 or 100. For example, 1 over 8, if we have the fraction of 1 eighth, we would not be able to make that 8 into 10 or 100. Because 8 doesn't times by anything to give us either of those numbers. So we have to have a different strategy. And today, the strategy we're going to use is we're going to use bus stop division so that we can turn any fraction into a decimal. So let's have a look here. We're going to start with an easy one. So we've got a half and we want to turn it into a decimal. Now, you may be thinking, but I can turn half into something over 10. And you would be correct. But this method that I'm about to show you will work with any fraction. So what you do 
the golden rule is you take the denominator and you put it on the outside of the bus stop. You take the numerator, you put it on the inside of the bus stop. And then you divide. So I take two and I ask myself, how many twos go into one? Well, they don't. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to take that one, one, and I'm going to turn it into tenths. I show that one here by carrying the one over. Now I ask myself, how many twos go into ten? Five groups. The answer is five. So the decimal is 0 0.5. One half is equal to 0 0.5. I show you with this one again denominator on the outside numerator on the inside five doesn't go into one so we put a zero and we carry the one over we turn it into tenths which we show here five goes into ten twice two groups so the answer is 0 0.2 one fifth is equal to 0 0.2. We can do it with a fraction that has a bigger numerator, doesn't really matter. We do the exact same thing. Denominator, outside, numerator, inside. 5 goes into 2. Well, it doesn't, so we put a 0. We take those whole ones and we turn them into tenths, like you can see here, and we carry it over. 5 goes into 20 four times. So the answer is 0 0.4. A quarter, no different. We do exactly the same process. Four doesn't go into one. We carry the one over. Now the difference here is four goes into ten twice, but it has two left over. So we carry that 2 over again. We then do 4 into 20, which in this case would go 5 times. So the answer is 0 0.25. OK, then, using that method, can you have a go, please, at turning these into decimals using division? Remember, denominator goes on the outside, numerator goes on the inside. Off you go. Sorry about that. I've had this is the second time I've been recording this video because the first time it stopped at this point and I didn't realise. So I'm just double checking that it is still going. So here are your answers here. Four fifths would become 0 0.8. Three fifths would become 0 0.6. Three quarters would become 0 0.75. Now, this is where we get into those more complex fractions that I was talking about. These are the ones that you couldn't turn into tenths or a hundredths. The ones here you could, these ones you can't. But the process is exactly the same. So I take one eighth, I put the denominator on the outside, numerator on the inside, and then I divide. Eight doesn't go into one, so we put a zero. Carry the one across to make it 10 tenths. Eight goes into that once with two left over. Eight goes into 20 twice with four left over. And eight goes into 40 five times. So my answer is 0 0.125. One eighth becomes 0 0.125. Doesn't matter if the numerator is different, what I'd like you to do now is can you pause the video and have a go at solving three eighths? Can you tell me what the equivalent decimal is to three eighths by dividing? Pause the video now. OK, so like it says, we're going to do eight into three. Doesn't go. So we put zero and we carry that three across. Eight goes into 30 three times. With six left over. 8 goes into 60, 7 times, with 4 left over, 
and 8 goes into 40 five times with nothing left over. So 3 eighths is equal to 0 0.375. Now this one's slightly different because we have what's called an improper fraction. Now an improper fraction is where the numerator is larger than the denominator. Doesn't make any difference. All you have to remember is that the denominator must go on the outside. The numerator must go on the inside. We then divide like normal. The difference you'll notice is in all the ones we've done here, we end up with zero point something. And that is because the numerator is smaller than the denominator. When the numerator is bigger than the denominator, we won't end up with a zero here. We start by asking ourselves, five goes into seven. Yes, it does. It goes once with two left over. Then we do five into 20, which would be four. So seven over five is equal to 1.4. Can you have a go at nine fifths, please? Do exactly the same. You're just dividing. Pause the video now. OK, five goes into nine once with four left over. Five goes into 40 eight times. Answer 1.8. We can do the same with nine over four twice with one left over twice with two left over and five times 2.25. Activity two then using exactly what we just did is can you turn these fractions please into decimals remember denominator on the outside numerator on the inside pause the video now. Okay let's see how you got on. So again, some of them went into three decimal places, but as long as you follow the division, you shouldn't have had any problems with those. Moving on then, we're looking at some word problems. This is something that both groups can have a go at. It just takes a little bit of getting your head around what the question's asking you to do. So the first one, it says eight friends share five cookies. I've got eight friends in total. So that's my denominator because there are eight people. And I've got five cookies being shared between them. So my fraction is five cookies shared between eight people. Five divided by eight. How much does each friend receive? That is asking me to turn it into a decimal. The way I do that is exactly what we've just been doing. I'm going to take my denominator and put it on the outside and then my numerator goes on the inside denominator numerator and then I divide 8 into 5 doesn't go so I put 0 and I carry the 5 over 8 into 50 doesn't quite go but I can get close because I know that 8 times 6 is 48 with two left over. I can now do eight into 20. Again, I can't quite get there, but I can nearly get there. If I times it by two, I get 16, which leaves me with four left over. Eight goes into 40, five times. So my answer is 0 0.625. See if you can use that to have a go at the other two. And here are your answers. 0 0.625, the one we did together, 1.6 and 2.75. Activity four is aimed at my group. I'm just going to show you how this works. So the first question here is it says that Yasmin shares three cookies between some friends. So we've got our numerator, which is three. But we don't know how many friends she's got. Question mark. Each friend gets 
one and a half cookies, 1.5 cookies. Three divided by something, or three shared by something, gets me 1.5. Our job is to work out the something. Now, those of you in my group, this is what we call a missing part problem, which we do in our tough 10 quite a lot. So let me write it a different way and see if you can solve it. Three divided by something equals 1.5. See if you can work out the answer. OK, so you should have had two because three divided by two is one and a half. So therefore, my missing denominator is two, which can be seen here. And then there's the bottom one. OK. Thank you very much. I hope you have a lovely weekend as it is Friday and I look forward to seeing you all on Monday. For now, stay safe. See you soon.